Yeah, I'm back. It says right there, I'm live. I tried to do a live stream on the way to the uh, post office. It worked for a little while. And I stuck the phone in my pocket. And uh, apparently I lost the signal. It looks like the sound went out as I was speaking, as I was unloading the uh, packages from the back of my truck. And uh, then my signal completely went out. And I tried to log back onto the live stream. And the screen had gone completely black. It said that it was still live. And um, I, I couldn't get any kind of video or sound or anything like that. I couldn't see if anybody uh, was seeing me. So I just uh, decided to end it uh, there and just finish that when I got home. So I'm home now. Me and Willis are back. I see there's about five people here. I'll wait for a minute before I talk about what I was excuse me, going to talk about. Um, yeah, the timing of the uh, the live streams ending are impeccable. Now, I was talking about how the uh, the people in the post office were were hassling me for the last couple of years and uh, using direct conversation, neuro linguistic programming. You know, they don't know it's called neuro linguistic programming. I don't think. I think that they just get an order, and they're told to say certain things, pull off certain skits, different things like that. But that's ended pretty much. And uh, I really appreciate that. So, um, that being said, just kind of waiting for a few more people to show up. Well, nah, maybe I won't wait um, because people can go back and, and just check this out. I'll get to what I was going to talk about. Uh, I was contacted yesterday. Actually, I had made a comment on Twitter. Um, I saw that this gentleman named John uh, Robertson or Roberson. I'm sorry, John, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, but I saw that he had, had tweeted uh, something about uh, John B. Wells, Caravan to Midnight. They had uh, they had an MK Ultra survivor guest on the show, and John said... Uh, had this person on the show, this really shook me to the core. And I was like, oh, man, you should hear some of the other stories. I, I haven't listened to the, um, the interview. I don't even know who the, uh, the gentleman was. He talked to me about it a little bit last night, but um, in that interview, but I, I just I just responded to him and said, if you'd like to hear more about what, uh, what other survivors have gone through or go through, you know, let me know. And the next thing you knew, next thing I know, uh, we connected and we were on the phone. And I spent probably four or five hours on the phone with that guy last night. And he is an interesting, intelligent guy. We've got a lot in common. Uh, we're both from California originally. Uh, he was in Hollywood uh, producing... Uh, TV shows, working on film sets, prop design, uh, stuff like that. Uh, traveled all over the United States doing different shows. You know, I was in photography, uh, doing photography for bands and stuff like that, uh, big bands and uh, models and all that kind of stuff. So we had a conversation about that. It was kind of fun to reminisce a little bit. Um, but both of us decided that uh, California was no longer any good for us. Um, we saw it going downhill. He basically, um, from what I was listening to, he got blacklisted out of Hollywood. And I don't think I trust anybody more than somebody that was blacklisted out of Hollywood. Uh, that means that he wasn't playing along with their games, their, um, their nonsense that they have going on in the industry there, and uh, basically kicked him out, which is good. Um, he went from the dark side to the light side, so good for him. But uh, yeah, we had we had a really good conversation. Though. John is the producer for a show called Caravan to Midnight, with um, a talk show host named John B. Wells. And I've been listening to John for a couple years now. He's been on the radio uh, for a long time, I think decades. But uh, I think the the first time that I listened to John B. Wells' show, I was just like, this is my kind of guy. 
this is uh, this is the kind of guy that I would like to hang out with, uh, talk with, have conversations with about real issues, um, and I like his style of interviewing people. And I never thought I would end up on the show, but after speaking with John last night, John Roberson, uh, I am going to be the featured guest on Caravan to Midnight, either this Thursday or Friday. So that's a good thing. I wasn't sure how many more uh, talk shows I was going to do. I was just going to keep documenting uh, all of the... Uh, the things that transpired in my life. Let's see, I see somebody left a message here. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm going to be on Caravan at Midnight, either Thursday or Friday. Uh, go to my Twitter, Michael Barden, number eight. Uh, not the number sign, just M-I-C-H-A-E-L-B-A-R-D-E-N eight, at Michael Barden eight. And I'll update people with the, uh, the time and exact time and day that I'm going to be on. Uh, I just got a message here to give John my email address so they can send me the paperwork for the show. Um, huh, paperwork, interesting. I wonder if I get paid? Nah, probably not. I don't care if I do. This is this this is important. I mean, it would be nice to make some money, but whatever. Uh, somebody, somebody on here just asked what the poster is on the right side. Let's see. So this is my left, my right. I don't know if you're looking at that backwards. Uh, this one here that I'm pointing at here, this is the Q map. This is uh, made by Dylan Monroe, and that is basically everything you need to know about the deep state, the shadow government, and how control has been kept over uh, society for a very long time. <laughs> JM. You're funny. You need to find a different YouTube channel. I haven't even said anything um, that would uh, warrant you saying that. So I, I think you might need some uh, some counseling for narcissistic behavior. So, but this uh, this other map over here. Is the cult of ball map B A A L, and that basically shows the power structure that has been implementing all of these processes uh, in our society around the world. And uh, basically, the the middle of the map has the Vatican, leads out to um, Roman Empire, uh, the Jesuits, Kings of Babylon, a uh, bunch of different things like that. And it's good to study see basically who's responsible for a lot of the control in uh, in society you know the control us that aren't uh, the excuse me quote kings and queens and uh, a lot of people trip out about the um, the uh, symbolism that's on there they say oh that's a cult take well yeah it's intentional it's supposed to be it's not that I belong to the cult it's uh, go to the deep state mapping project go to the deep state mapping project Dylan Monroe it's deep state mapping project.com and uh, you can research all you want on that website you can buy these posters you can check them out and see what uh, what kind of information it goes over so that's what those are um, okay so back to caravan to midnight if you don't know about Caravan to Midnight. There are all kinds of interesting guests on this show. Um, I'm on the website right now. And they just had on August 28th, if you've heard about the Google whistleblower, uh, his name is Zach Voorhees. This guy is one of my new heroes right here. He um, lives in San Francisco or did live in San Francisco. I don't know if he moved or not. Um, but he worked for Google and saw that they were manipulating uh, the algorithms, they were making a blacklist basically for um, conservatives uh, to redirect people if they looked up certain websites. Uh, it wouldn't show up in the Google uh, results. You would have to go 
directly to the website itself to be able to go to it. Um, so they basically made a list of a bunch of websites dark, uh, so everybody's searches would go to uh, certain other websites that they wanted people to go to. Um, so let's see what it says on the website. Uh, about Zach says in tonight's program, we welcome first time guest Zach Bohr. He's the Google whistleblower who released 950 pages of documents revealing Google's censorship of conservatives. Zach speaks to us about big tech censorship and more. And then uh, on the same show, they had uh, Jim Hoft, who runs the website The Gateway Pundit, which you can get a lot of information. And actually, I'm pretty sure The Gateway Pundit is one of those websites that was being censored by Google. Uh, so those two people were just on the show. Zach, if you ever happen to see this man, you have balls of steel, my friend. You are an amazing person. Not all heroes wear uniforms. Not all heroes wear capes. Some of them have a man bun and uh, wear V-neck t-shirts and live in San Francisco. You are the man. I, you have my utmost respect. I would, I would love to meet you someday. You are... <laughs> Jeez. That guy, that guy is just an awesome person. He was making over $200,000 a year working for Google, lived in San Francisco, which used to be a really nice place. Uh, it's nice if you're in a building up high, you're not down on the ground level with everybody crapping on the streets and stuff like that. Um, I'd, I'd love that town. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if the guy lives there anymore. I'm not sure. But he gave all that up, gave up his couple hundred thousand dollar a year job but you probably need a job uh, that makes that much money just to be able to afford like a one bedroom studio apartment in San Francisco. All right, so those are a few guests that were on um, Caravan to Midnight. David Hawkins, who's been on Crowdsource the Truth quite a few times uh, with Jason Goodman. He's uh, been featured on this, on this channel. They've had Field McConnell See, I'm just looking at the photos here. I don't know who Ben Murphy is or John Moore. I need to look some of these people up. Uh, Bill Benny was just on the show recently, a uh, little more than a week ago, I guess, a week and a half ago, something like that. And um, so it was Bill Benny and Jeff Rennick, R-A-N-E-K. I'm not familiar with Jeff. I'm guessing that Jeff has something to do with the uh, Intel world. But uh, yeah, Bill Benny, the former technical director of the NSA, was on this show. Bill just was supposed to speak at Dimensions of Disclosure in Ventura, California, and a friend of mine was there, and she sent me a picture of a flyer saying Bill Benny has just had a minor heart attack uh, the day before he was supposed to speak. You know, send out prayers for Bill. Uh, hope that he gets better. Uh, but Bill, Bill's a big deal. There's a movie about Bill. Go on Netflix. It's called A Good American. And it pretty much goes over his story about how he uh, uh, whistle blew on the NSA, tracking everyone uh, illegally through illegal compartmentalized programs. So, anyway, that's just a few of the people that have been on Caravan to Midnight recently. I uh, looked at their YouTube channel, uh, the About and they've had over 13 million views just on their videos and i think most of their that's that's a small part of their uh, viewership a lot of the viewership goes through the uh, website here you can see that but that's the caravan to midnight website and uh, they have millions and millions of viewers they have some videos that get a million views um, And, oh, actually, talking to the producer last night, I'd like to see this happen, too. Uh, the producer said he was a, a fan of Edge of Wonder, which uh, some of you know about Edge of Wonder. My friend Desiree has just been featured on Edge of Wonder. And um, will be again, question mark? I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything about that. Uh, so I'll just 
not say anything. Anyway, Desiree's been on uh, Edge of Wonder, and uh, this guy, John, happens to be a big fan of them. So I'd like to see them get on the show on uh, Caravan to Midnight also. Ben and Rob would be great on this show. I'd love to see them interviewed by uh, John Wells. I guarantee it would be funny as well as informative. I'm laughing, just picturing it in my head right now. Um, just because they both have interesting sense of humors and they have a lot of information in their heads. It'd be good to see those guys uh, go back and forth and just talk about a lot of this different stuff. So, um, YouTube has contacted me about my channel being demonetized. I've been in this, this just loop, this vicious loop of uh, trying to log into AdSense and it tells me to delete my old AdSense account and start a new one. So I go and I delete the old AdSense account try to start a new one and it goes back to the same page it says delete your old account I said I have deleted it there's I'm trying to get a hold of somebody to tell him look I'm stuck in limbo here I can't do anything so they finally contacted me through Twitter I contacted them explained to them that they owed me $1,400 uh, for the uh, like the first year I was on YouTube building up my channel and wasn't making very much money um, and it was up to around fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars I needed that money to pay rent pay some bills and I went to withdraw that money. And I said I had to start an AdSense account. When I started the AdSense account, it basically booted me out. I either clicked the wrong button or um, some something weird happened. Uh, I don't know, but I've been trying to get help since then. Uh, they messaged me and said that they're going to help me uh, get the channel re-monetized. I will believe that when I see it. Uh, not to say anything negative about YouTube, I just know they've um, deleted some important channels, people that are trying to get the word out about um, some, some truth. And I'm doing the same thing, so I can't imagine that they really want me on YouTube. But if they would re-monetize my channel, that would be great. I'm hurting really bad financially right now. I've got a... got an appointment coming up, an evaluation that's going to cost me $2,500 to $5,000 that is court ordered. And uh, that's going to hurt really bad. It'll leave me with almost nothing. So uh, getting this YouTube channel monetized would greatly help my financial situation. I'm getting enough viewers now to actually possibly make a living on YouTube. And uh, if that's the case, I would do more YouTube videos. They wouldn't all um, deal with being a targeted individual or deep state antics, stuff like that. I'd put in a bunch of different uh, different other kinds of videos too, uh, just to kind of mix up my channel. Because I, you know, I started this YouTube channel for fun, basically to uh, talk about antiques and collectibles, and upload skateboarding videos, you know, things like that, and. Uh, if they remonetize it, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be do talking about the kinds of things I talk about, but I'm also going to be doing other videos of uh, just other random stuff. So, all right, I've talked enough about what's going on here with me, shows that I'm going to be on, show that I'm going to be on, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, let me go to the, the comments here and check this out. Okay, so Not In My House says, Hey, Michael, how you doing? That's a funny name. Not In My House. Uh, not my Thomas. Hey, Thomas, how are you? Uh, okay, Gina Davies says it's a little hard to hear. I can't do anything about the volume when I have my iPhone here. I, I can't turn up the volume. All you can do is turn up yours, and I apologize. <clears throat> you know, 90% of the people say that the volume's fine, so I'm not sure if it's uh, what's going on there between this, this video and you watching it. Oh, speaking of 90%, this person, uh, Thomas, says, not in my house, uh, says our mail 
my small biz has been damaged 90% of the time. Mail is affected a lot for a lot of targeted individuals. Uh, Tavish99 says, good evening, Mike from Ireland. How are you? How you doing? I've got a thing on my wall that uh, I got at the kiosk at the mall when I was a kid. And uh, you tell them your last name and it prints out your ancestry. You know, it has nothing to do with DNA. They could be completely wrong about my ancestry. But um, that, that printout that I got says that I'm half Irish and half English, which I know I'm at least half Danish. My mom's side of the family is all from Denmark. Uh, like third, I think I'm third generation from Denmark. Um, so, but uh, yeah, it said that uh, my last name derives from the Valley of the Bard in Ireland, where uh, the people that lived there grew hops to make beer. Who knows? Who knows? It sounded cool. I put it on my wall. Okay, so we've got Ireland, got Canada. Uh, it says that I look like I've caught up on some rest. Okay, well, I'm glad that it at least looks that way. I almost didn't do this live stream. I was going to lay back down here for a minute and try to sleep. I, I can't catch up. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, let's see, Michael, what's the poster on the wall about again? The one on the right. So I talked about that one. That's the Cult of Ball, B-A-A-L. Just go to the Deep State Mapping Project. Check that out. Um, oh, here's a good question. Here's a good question right here. Um, John Hutchinson, 23. Sorry it took me so long to answer this. Um, no, actually, I, haven't not, I have not decided to stay in Arizona. I can't afford to live here anymore. The cost of living has gone up. In the almost five years that I've lived here, I rented this giant house for just a little over $1,200 a month when I first moved here because the uh, um, when the housing bubble crashed, uh, it had not recovered here yet. They had um, they had overbuilt in this area, and there was a bunch of vacant homes basically. And um, I rented this house with the intention of selling my home in California and purchasing a piece of property out here by the ISM Raceway, building a house and living there for the rest of my life. And then my plans got turned upside down, realized I was targeted and started going through all that and I've lost pretty much everything since then. Lost my house in California. Uh, lost everything. Um, so yeah, and I what I what I did I purchased a piece of property in West Virginia, half an acre. It's got a mobile home on it and an old house that looks like the Beverly Hillbillies home. Uh, I it's in the the poorest county in West Virginia. It is uh, I I think that's correct. I'm not sure, but anyway, there's uh, you know people were moving out of West Virginia left and right. And uh, because there were no jobs, there were no jobs at all. And then Trump was elected and he changed a few things and they can start mining coal again now. And um, that area should be picking back up. But uh, I saw that 67% of West Virginia voted for Trump. And I liked that. And uh, they've, been, they've been a democratic state for uh, since like the early 1900s. They haven't voted a Republican in since like 1933. And in the 2016 election, they decided, you know, we've had enough of this shit. Let's vote for Trump. And if you go on to Wikipedia and look at their, uh, their voting demographics through the years, it's just blue all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. And then Trump gets, goes uh, for election and then it just turns red all the way across the board. They had enough of it, and uh, I thought, well, hey, that's the place for me. Now I am being held.
held hostage here, basically. Some of you know that I'm on probation right now. I was set up for crime. After one year and eight months, I was uh, convicted of a felony. I was not allowed to go to trial as I requested. Uh, they never gave me my exculpatory evidence. I could have filed a motion to compel for the exculpatory evidence. The attorney never told me what a motion discovery was. It was just I got screwed all the way through the whole thing. Spent around $50,000 going through court. And um, here I am now, convicted felon on probation. And uh, to move out of the state when you are on probation, you have to file an uh, I can't remember what the name of the request is. Anyway, you have to ask permission from your owners to, um, to move out of the state. Uh, I explained to them my financial situation. I'll be able to move there. I'll be able to catch up with taxes. I'll be able to be a productive citizen in society like I always have. Um, I'll just be able to recover from my financial um, wounds after all of this uh, compartmentalized, weaponized system attack. And... Uh, they're taking as long as they possibly can. The uh, probation officer said they could take up to three months. And I've started this request over a month ago, so up to three months. I, I'm thinking they're going to go ahead and take the entire time and just try to bleed me dry. So um, we'll see how that works out. So, which is too bad. I really do like Arizona. Um, I don't like the, uh, the corrupt government that has been running this place for years. Um, I don't like that there is mafia around here and uh, they're involved in some of this. You've got two types. you got the Arizona Mafia, which is political, and then you've got the Mafia Mafia. And I'm pretty sure I pissed off both of them, which is fine with me. Uh, someone said, JM, get lost. Yeah, get lost, JM. I think Beto O'Rourke has a channel podcast you might want to go check out. Let's see. Not in my house. Thomas says, do you think the ones in control would allow that to be printed, or do you think they could be printing false info to be way us? Um, sway us, to sway us. You know, anything is possible, um, but anyone can get a poster printed out through an independent printing uh, press, independent printing business. Um, artists have to go through independent printers all the time, you know, not a big corporation, a small mom and pop type printer. Um, but from my research, from my experience, and um, yeah, from my research and my personal experience, there's nothing on this Q map that's wrong. This Q map over here. Um, this one over here, uh, you know, I've always heard all roads lead to Rome, and we're seeing. A lot of proof of that so uh, this is a good one to study right here you know just because you have a poster on your wall doesn't mean that you like sit down you worship the poster you it's like reading a book you read the book you make an objective decision about the information in the book and you decide if you say oh well this is bullshit or this is um, this is something I need to keep in my memory banks Oh, yeah, someone said there's an actual poop patrol in San Francisco. I, yeah, I've seen the giant bags full of it. It's too bad. I just can't. I mean, I've seen some crazy stuff in San Francisco. I've been driving down the road in San Francisco, and I saw a woman on a mattress with a bunch of trash bags around her. Like, she got thrown out of her house or something, and she was literally tying her arm off and injecting heroin into her arm uh, on the street as we were driving by. I was there with my girlfriend, Stephanie, and we went for a, a Giants game or something like that. And uh, I was like, wow, right there on the street. She's just injecting heroin into her arm. Wow. Um, that was over 10 years ago. 
let's see. Tad Ghostel says, dude, I'm a member to Caravan to Midnight. He's a good man and a deep learner. Congrats. You will help people understand TI and create awareness to the powers that be. Sick. <laughs> awesome. Sick. Yep, I might be. Um, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I love that show. All right, Billy the Kid. Billy Kid says volume is good here. All right. Uh, not my house says try being half Irish and half Scottish. Scottish. Uh, Mike Cop <laughs> says. Hey, Mike, I posted earlier about implants, stentrode, implants for PTSD and fibromyalgia. Did you receive? Did you see? Did it get deleted? I didn't see anything about that. I've never heard of stentrode implants. I'm not the expert on implants. I just know that people are uh, implanted uh, non-consensually during elective surgeries. Uh, somebody says that house is massive, big pimpin'. No, you know what? I wouldn't wish this on my best friend. If you have a large family, if you have four or five people, six people, yes, it's a good idea to live in a house this big. This house is 3,050 square feet. At one time, it made sense for us uh, to live in here. Uh, there were multiple people working. We had an employee. Um, the only reason we got a place this big is because I could put the inventory from the eBay store in here too and use it as a multifunction dwelling basically. Uh, now it's just two of us. The bills are ridiculous. I had a $700 electricity bill one month. That's nonsense. I want to live in a tiny home on a piece of property with some, excuse me, with some solar panels and, um, basically have one room for my my room and my uh, computer and all that stuff one room for the kitchen the laundry room and all the uh, the daily duty room and a room for my daughter small rooms connected like maybe uh, three of those small storage units connected together that we could turn into a home um, that not only would be fine with me that would be preferable to me I want something smaller. This is this is, does not make any sense. So this house will be available if anybody wants to move into it here in uh, hopefully just a month or so. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I had given my 30-day notice. That's one thing I wanted to talk to everybody about. I'd given my 30-day notice for this place, and I didn't know how it worked. I thought once that I gave my 30-day notice, I would have to leave on the day that um, that was up. And I contacted the... Um, the rental agency and um, property management agency. And uh, they notified me that if I just changed my mind and I wanted to go ahead and stay, as long as I keep paying rent, I could stay here. So that's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, I didn't want to move to another place around here. Okay, somebody says, I might want to use my iPhone earbuds with the microphone attached to your mic set up. Increase your volume considerably or find a good mic on eBay. Cheap 20 bucks. Okay, I'll use my headphones next time. I'll use my he headphones next time. Um, somebody says, oh, they're in Kingman. Same thing in Kingman. There's some property on the other side of Kingman out in Golden Valley. You can get a couple acres for real cheap. Set yourself up a tiny home out there. Okay. All right. I've been on here for about 35 minutes. Uh, I need to get going. I, I need to get back to work. I just wanted to update everybody and let everybody know what's going on. I'm just kind of rambling here. Well, I guess I'm talking to everybody. That's what a live stream's for, right?
make sure I have a junk drawer. Somebody asked, how was Wilson? Wilson, <laughs> like my, my painted volleyball, the island that I'm stuck on. Wilson! So, Willie's good. He's chilling back here. Check him out. He thinks he owns the place. So, he's a good dog. All right. Willis, tell everybody bye. Tell everybody bye. Wag your tail. Wag your tail. There you go. There you go. All right. That's how he says bye. All right. Everybody have a good day. I got to get out of here. I, I got stuff to do. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> that's what I said when I saw his name at the rescue. What you talking about, Willis? I said, we got to get this dog. He's awesome. Um, am I in a hotel? No, I am not in a hotel. I'm not in a hotel. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Does it, does it look like it? Oh. Did, I don't know. Do they have guitars and mid-century modern furniture in hotels? If I was in a hotel that had this type of furniture, it'd be like uh, $500 a night. Uh, but anyway, nope, not in a hotel. These are my posters. Deep State Mapping Project. But that's kind of funny. It almost does look like... <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, got my bed. Got the, got the posters up on the wall. I can't even really see what they are. Just the nightstands. Uh, that's funny man you made me laugh way to end the, the podcast thank you all right everybody have a good day talk to you later